Chat, I've got a question for y'all. I got something I've been thinking about. I've been trying to, as you guys know, from a third party perspective, pay attention to the RLCS for a while. And I still am wrapping my head around what's missing from RLCS, from Rocket League Esports, something that Psyonix can put a direct impact on, Epic Games included. What's missing from Rocket League Esports? That is the question I'm going to pose to you, chat. We're going to have some open dialogue about it. We're going to have some conversation about it. I'm going to get one immediately out of the way because I say it every single time. Merch. Duh. RL Esports merch in some capacity, whether it be t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, mugs, what, all of it, any of it. I just, I just got sent a care package from Twitch for being a partner and they sent me a blanket, a flask, socks, a portable hard drive, a heckin' Connect 4 set. Just anything. Anything RLCS branded, please. So merch. We're gonna take that, push it aside, right? We 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 beat that dead horse every single time we talk about this. But I want to focus more on other things that they can do to either A, improve the viewing experience, whether it be with the broadcast itself. There's some people that have suggested these earlier in the stream, but also other things that are content related, things that they can directly control. And I've got some ideas of my own, but I want to do this with you guys as well. And for everybody who's watching on YouTube, chat, say hello to the YouTube frogs. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribing, make sure you guys do that down below. But I want to have an open conversation in regards to things that you guys think would be good to help with the concept of Rocket League Esports. Content pieces, things that you guys think are missing, and to make it easier to give you guys kind of an idea, I can I can start. Before I do though, Riot TV says bring back midseason mayhem. Um, I will never agree to that. Um, and I'll provide context why. The reason why midseason mayhem was terrible, <laughs> not to like completely poop on you, Riot. I'm sorry, but midseason mayhem was was done horribly. It was a ten thousand dollar tournament with random various rumble, snow day, whatever different extra game modes in the middle of the season. And we did a couple couple weeks of league play and then we did meet season mayhem and then we went back to league play and it it basically created more of an issue, right? Like mid season mayhem, it killed convert, concurrent viewership. Like viewership dropped by like 10, 15,000 viewers and never came back. Everybody watching was super confused and was like, "Wait, does this count for the regular season? Is this what like what's happening?" So all that stuff didn't go well. And then it also was just super confusing and, and completely against everything the pros were practicing for. It was in the middle of their season. They're like, by the way, I need you guys to practice for this one tournament. Uh, and then we'll go back to the other stuff. So like in itself, it was just a really bad idea. I did propose on the other side of things. What would have been a good idea is taking that allocation of money and that week and doing it before the season started. So like before we did league play, Bring all the players out, do a media day, do an all-star event, have them all together, create a bunch of B-roll and all that kind of stuff, which will go into my next topic, but have a way to have interviews, fun interviews, like in the sense of like when Scrub and Justin uh, ish talk each other and get some banter going, like an ongoing series, things like that. So before the season starts, bring all the new teams and players out. Hopefully now that uh, rosters are going to stay for the most part the same a little bit more frequently. But you bring them out, you have an all-star event, you have them play an all-star competition. It's kind of like a BTS type event B beyond the summit for those that don't know where it's super laid back, really casual, a lot of fun. And then you use all that interview and all that content and you play that throughout the year. Um, and that brings to my first recommendation. I'm curious on how you guys feel about it. I think the number one thing that has been missing from Rocket League Esports more than anything is the ability to become fans of players and teams there to me still is not enough content in general from organizations or otherwise to help build and get you to enjoy the people as people the players right now are what is your personality what is your character trait and it's i play rocket league which i don't give two about because as much as i know you play rocket league and i see you do that every day that is not what draws me to you as a player if you hit crazy nutty cracked shots that's one thing but the thing that is going to make me a fan of you long-term is getting to know you on a regular basis. I'm going to hashtag sell out a little bit here. If you guys haven't taken the time to watch my YouTube series, uh, Rocket Talk, which we haven't been able to do in a while because Violent Panda sucks at scheduling things. 
Um, and hopefully that changes soon because he's now signed with Heroic and we can talk about stuff. But those interviews are an hour, hour plus long and it literally has nothing to do with Rocket League. It's just two people sitting down, hanging out and getting to know the person and their personality. I mean, when me and John Salmon did it, we both laughed about like, yo, can we not talk about Rocket League? I'm like, gladly, dude. What have you been up to? How's your day? Let's talk about, you know, health and fitness and the things that have been going on. And it basically became a way to eavesdrop on a conversation between two friends. And I feel like that kind of stuff is missing. But the, the conflict I have is how do you get a 15, 16, 17 year old kid to not be nervous on camera? How do you get a, a, a person in that capacity to, to feel comfortable? And I think that's part of it is if given the, you know, if given the keys or given the budget, I would do my best to once a month, once a quarter, whatever it, you know, whatever it is, fly out to where that person is located with a, with a video or a, you know, a production crew and just record the day. Let's hang out. Let's go do some activities. Let's go play go cards, let's paintball. Let's go laser, whatever, any sort of activity locally that will get this person out of their comfort zone. Will, will, although be something different, it'll still be fun and hopefully allow them to open up and be a bit more charismatic, a little bit more personable to get you to know the person for who they are. And some of these will hit, some of these will miss. But I do think the number one thing lacking from Rocket League Esports is the building of personality with content and B-roll. Uh, the ability to play feature videos throughout the entire year. Because the only time we get to interact with the players right now is when Leaf and them do a interview after their matches if they win. There's no loser interviews because the pros don't like it, and I get it. But I think those are when the interviews are the most impactful because it, you grow more from a loss, in my opinion. And you see that real emotion, which if these players want to continue to be elite status and grow to that mainstream, there's going to be a time where things aren't in your favor. Things aren't all sunshine and rainbows, and you're going to have to do a little bit of talking. Knowing to kind of swallow a loss and talk about the, like, after every single NFL football game, the players go and have a press conference, whether they win or lose, and they talk about stuff, and they get berated by, you know, reporters. So those types of things. And I think the difficulty is we don't have anything outside of that. We don't have any content or interview-related things that showcase players and they've done a couple video features there was the one from Kronovi where he got memed on by Doomsie it's one of the funniest parody videos I've ever seen about how he does karate and stuff and that's how he got the nickname of the mountain and stuff but like those videos are memorable people remember that stuff they did one for Turbo Pulsa as well but the issue is like it's a three or four minute video piece and like half of it is replays like get get rid of that stuff you know like get rid of that stuff I don't want to see replays of you hitting shots and stuff. I don't care about gameplay. I want to know about you as a person. And let's sit down and talk about it, you know? And if we record for numerous hours, compensate, you know, the player for their time and find a way to splice that video content down for, you know, a 15, 20, 30, 40 minute video that you can play then over the course of the entire season. You can use that whenever you want throughout the year. Rather than just a one and done thing, it can live on its own as its own content but like there needs to be a way to grow the player personalities and get them to feel more comfortable. And hopefully with LAN, you know, now that we're going to have technically three majors a year and one world championship, that is four opportunities for them to have that kind of stuff. So again, it needs to be organic. It needs to feel fun. And that's the whole point of like, yo, if we go play laser tag, bro, and you got a GoPro on and we've got you mic'd up, hopefully we get some candid answers and some candid reactions as compared to scripting. Uh, Hey, this is what we want this segment to be. I don't want that. I want it to be natural and candid. And it may take a little bit for that person to warm up, but at the same time, it's going to lead for a lot of really good moments. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the more you ask that person who is being interviewed what they would like to do, getting their feedback, their you know input on what would be fun, the better it's going to go. So to me, that's the, I think, number one thing. I think that's the number one thing that needs to happen is finding a way to express and showcase the players and their personalities uh, that some of us have been blessed to see off camera that we don't get to see on camera because that is how you build these people to be all-star superstars etc so that is my spiel that is my rant about what i think would be really really cool uh content with players staff whatever that has nothing to do with rocket league like geo says though in chat justin versus scrub part three ongoing series love it hope it keeps happening i think that's great
having stuff like the foosball variant you guys did at we play to show during breaks would be great yeah i think unique content like that is a really cool idea it's not much but it's better than nothing you know even though it, majority of the time it was them casting our matches and stuff it was just us messing around playing foosball and half the stuff we were saying i don't think we was going to be allowed to be on, like we were we were trash talking each other quite a bit we kept calling uh spaceman lord farquad super funny um good times an official fantasy league i think is a good way to get people invested i think that's kind of cool uh if you guys don't check out fan rl i would recommend it bts best rl event ever i agree just because of the atmosphere and again there there's a time and a place for that understand rlcs definitely needs to have a little bit more professionalism than bts does bts can be a little bit more laid back but i don't know anybody who doesn't love watching mafia or doesn't love seeing the rock paper scissors tournament or just seeing players interact with each other on the couch just hanging out you know that type of stuff is just it's so organic and so enjoyable and it goes back to my original point so there needs to be a time for a suit and tie and professionalism but at the other time at the other time it's a little bit different so again there's a lot of cool things like that that they could implement organizations content or simply here's your comms from the last event yeah it, again you do see teams like energy where they you know they rented a team house where they brought people together they you know did a bunch of things like they played beer pong with like punishments and stuff and at least it's something right that kind of stuff shows the personality which is good so stuff like that isn't a bad idea teams competing outside of rl paintball wipeout style stuff make them do ninja warrior or something i'll get sunless to come up with ideas yeah i mean those are the kind of stuff that i would love to see between uh local things as well right like the ability to see torrent versus v1 right that's a rival team those are two teams that live in the same state they're within 15 minutes of each other for their hq between mall of america and egan where where v1 hq is and like seeing rivalry content that's not rocket league related but just like the ability for them to compete against each other would be would be hilarious you know an ongoing series between torrent and v1 torrent's just got to perform a little bit better so at least they're you know top eight competition because right now v1 clapping but stuff like that's really cool uh tour dad says i think casters should be able to meet with the players a few days before the matches have questions other than rocket league uh then in between matches and stuff the casters can talk about subjects that came up in the meeting kind of like what the nfl does yeah 100 percent um also shout outs to tour dad for stopping by and chat greatly appreciate you being here but i agree i think there's a lot of things that can be learned from when it comes to traditional sports and the reference you give is a, is a great idea that's stuff that i used to do when i was part of the rlcs broadcast team is i would send a questionnaire to players and see if i could get response back i would ask their coaches about how they feel about certain things and how they you know i would obviously do the generic rocket league question stuff like how do you feel about your upcoming match how do you guys think things are prepped how do you think you know things are going with boot camp but at the same time trying to ask them like is there certain things you guys would like the world to know is there certain things like if you had the platform let me be that for you on camera you know there's a lot of exciting things that i think are missing out on but i i do love that the fact that you know trying to give time of day to where the casters go out of their way and say hey let's talk about some other stuff you know i was talking to this person off camera and he had these things to say you know it's cool you know just no more food questions for that i'm with you man i'm with you i can only do so much to reel things back in after super but it, it is what it is you know that's his that's his direction i do i do what i can i do what i can yeah chat if there's if there's certain things that you think would be good for the scene one that i saw recommended earlier in chat is spectator stuff i think there's a couple things that need to happen with the spectator and hopefully these things come through with the engine update whenever that'll be that'll be maybe this next year might be not for a couple of years but with unreal engine 5 hopefully we see a couple things that are similar to hltv if you guys don't know what that is uh why aren't you watching counter-strike the benefit is the ability to spectate from every different personal perspective so i can log in and watch through an embedded twitch page on rocket league client i can then tune into the match i can do pickums for matches where i can earn rewards and stickers and signatures and stuff like that i can do stuff like if i want to click a different perspective if i want to watch justin's camera or squishy's camera or garrett's camera i can watch their perspective rather than the director cam but you're basically spectating from in the game certain things like that i think are really important i think the fact that as a commentator or as a caster i have to assume things right like, I don't know if he has a flip reset or not. I should not have to assume, even with there's some visual hints 
and there are some audio cues that you can know if you got a flip reset or not, but I should never have to assume something as a commentator. I should just know based upon the information. Something as important as a flip reset, there should be an icon or something to that that lets me know if that person has their flip available or not. It's very important. As long as that's not abused as a coach or as someone who is spectating and then is able to relay that information, like if I'm a coach watching, I shouldn't know if that player that my teammate is trying to, you know, try to block, I shouldn't know if they have a flip or not. It's an unfair advantage. But as a spectator who is a third party just enjoying it and knowing that person has a flip reset or not, only levels up higher if he decides to fake it or not. Knowing that it's there, that additional information, and then being able to watch that play out with that information would be unbelievable. And as a commentator, being able to know that he has it or not and and be so confident that like he could have went for a flip reset there or not, instead of being like, I don't know if he had his flip or not. It looks like he did. Like I shouldn't have to tiptoe around that, right? Like so spectator needs an update. Uh, they're trying to increase and uh, showcase more things like boost meters and everything like that. But uh, the spectator client desperately needs some overhaul with that. So a lot of things like that would be really good. I want to see more cinematics, like how they did the Ford freestyle with them refilling the boost. Yeah. And hopefully they do that with the whole hype chamber thing and, and they increase the level uh, with augmented reality based things. Obviously, a lot of this will come hopefully with Unreal Engine 5 and there's a lot of things that that should provide. But as of now, it's kind of tough. We have to wait to see how that one plays out. Let us sit in the stands of the stadium. I would love to see VR stuff. Yeah, I would love and I don't know how how possible it is, but at LAN, I would like them to like cut out a section of LAN and that's that's like the VR section. So if you you pay like a virtual ticket then you can wear a VR headset and watch as if you're in the stadium. I think that'd be incredible. I think it'd be super cool. I just think there's so many cool things tech wise that they could implement for sure. Yeah, like if they had a if they had a set of VR cameras that they had set up at lands. So if you can't attend the ability to from a VR headset at home, put on your headset, you're sitting in the stands, you can look around and it'd be as if it's live. That'd be so sick. It's just such a unique way to experience land and give that kind of feeling of this is what it's like to actually be there. It'd be super cool. I think there's a bunch of different things for the like broadcast, whether you do like signed live reporting. So like imagine chat, and this is kind of the way that I see it playing out. Imagine we're watching RLCS, right? We've got the, we got the major this weekend or this next couple weeks. Fall split majors going on. All the matches are exciting, etc. What you guys don't see is that on the sideline after matches are done, there is someone there interviewing the players immediately after the match is done. Quick, quick interview on the sideline. Yo, man, how are the matches? How you feeling? Blah, blah, blah. A good interview. That stuff gets posted to Twitter. You're tackling it from both angles. You know, not everything has to be shown on the broadcast, but the ability to have some sort of additional content, some behind the scenes, some dedicated crew to make some of that stuff happen. So it feels unique, but things like that, you know, just extra ways to build up the benefit of being there in person. You know, there's, a, I think there's a lot of things that can be learned from. I mean, I look at WePlay, right? And see how they handled a lot of the things that I noticed from like their social team and how active they were about posting stuff and seeing behind the scenes things. And like in the middle of a series, they would ask us as the desk host and be like, yo, there's these things happening in the next few days. Can you talk about it so we can put that on social? You know, just ways to tackle it from different ends to bump viewership, to get people invested. You know, it's a, it's an entirely different team, like soft, soft and num nums, what a name. But yeah, you get a, you get a entirely separate crew. You know, it it is still part of the RL Esports broadcast team, but you have a interviewer, a production person, and then you have somebody else. And like immediately after the matches are done, you bring them to a different room. They sit down, quick little interview, like, hey guys, match went great. Hopefully you guys had fun. You know, how how easy was it? Did you did, like you guys four out them? Did you really clap them that hard? Like and get the conversation going. Super chill. Take 10 minutes of their time. All right. Thanks, guys. And then the editor and the producer can determine how they want that to come out. They splice it up, put it on social. And that's their only job for the entire weekend is to get cool little tidbits like that. So even though the broadcast has a time constraint and you're trying to push this thing along because it's a long I mean, we're talking 33 matches in three days just alone for Swiss. But like those types of things, right? Enough to build up because that not only helps them, but it also helps keep people engaged with what's going on. You know, talking with coaches and stuff like that. And they used to do that in Vegas. In Vegas, they we tried that with uh, Larry Ridley a little bit, you know? So those types of things I think are are missing. I, I, I do think those, any way that they can help boast and build, but 
chat this is just me talking i want to know what you guys think because there are other things that you guys think like that that would work if you guys do have additional ideas if you guys have things that you would like whether it be on chat or on youtube if you're a youtube frog and you're watching this and you have ideas similar to this regard let me know in the comments down below let me know what you guys think of what would be a good idea to help grow rl esports things ideas whether you take references from other sports traditional or non-traditional fan cam during the lands kiss cam that would be pretty funny a little awkward with a bunch of nerds kind of into it um i will agree the last thing i will say in regards to that tordad having a in the stands interviewer where someone who is doing those like you know you have that like street crew that we were just talking about the people that interview on the sidelines and stuff and in between they also every once in a while will have a segment during the break where they throw to a person who's in the crowd hanging out just chilling in the seats like what's up boys I think that'd be a great way to to break up the you know the 10 minute break in between matches and stuff showcase the community having a good time and stuff like that the difficulty though is that can be very scary because if if that stuff happens we have to be careful about who we interview what's going on people need to understand it's got to be family friendly there's a lot of risk when you do that but if sonix is willing to take some risks i guess that's the big thing let's take some risks let's see what we can do but I think that's a really cool way to give back and show off and stuff like that. Obviously, that's that's going to be a future tense thing for when uh, COVID and stuff kind of goes away. But would be cool. Would be really cool. Add a little bit of a delay. The ability to hit the kill switch and switch out if we need to. And have some someone on the big old button just in case bad things happen. So if you guys are watching, appreciate it. And uh, if you guys do enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up. But any ideas, content, ideas, stuff like that, comments down below would always be appreciated. Always cool stuff. I agree with Tordad. More family-related content. Uh, Tordad, you'll be happy to know I did pitch that 2v1 as well in some of our meetings, talking about we should do content with uh, comms parents, your, you and the wife, stuff like they've done in the past. Uh, I think it would be really, really cool because I know we did that for E-League stuff back in the day as well. So uh, with that said, if you guys are watching on YouTube, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, come join us on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Lawler, where we stream every day but Tuesday and Sunday. Uh, but that is going to do it for this video. Your recommendations, any suggestions down below, and I will do my best to do some of those as well in the future. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.